What is up, you savages? This is the Protect Your Neck Podcast, and I'm your host, Dan Tom. Analyst is work you can find over at MMAJunkie.com, but on this year's program, the Protect Your Neck Podcast, we break down high-level MMA. That's what we're going to do here today, tonight, whenever you're listening to this. Hopefully, it's for the fight. Recording this late Thursday night for weigh-ins uh, here over in Las Vegas, where the fights aren't going, actually, because it's going to be a live crowd down over in H-Town, Houston. Shouts to uh, anyone over there in H-Town, Joe from H-Town, for example. Um, yeah, so that'll be that'll be that as I slightly turn down the schnob there. Um, and we're going to break down the fight from top to bottom, check the timestamps as per usual when it starts. As per usual, I'll recap my picks and plays toward the end. Uh, you can find those timestamps whether you're listening to the audio version on YouTube. Appreciate your likes and subscribes there, Daniel Tom MMA. It really helps it out, uh, or on uh, Apple Podcast. Thanks for the five star ratings and reviews. I won't be reading those today. We'll try to get to some Amazon reads um, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, uh, which of course you can find those, even though it's corporations that are not cool. We do not like to support, but uh, if you do got to use certain things and the lesser of evils, ease your conscience. You go ahead and go to MixedMartialAnalyst.com that supports this here free program on the right, toggle right on the mobile. And uh, you can uh, go click through that link and just through an extra click, no extra charge. And a small percentage of your sale will be kicked back to this year's show or where the said links are to the right at MixedMartialAnalyst.com. There is a PayPal link that's secure if you want to just donate one time directly. No monthly fees or any of that stuff. Again, free show, but plan on staying free. Um, although it is, it is, it is difficult. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's been a crazy week uh, in case you guys haven't been following my timeline. Uh, you know, so I, apologies in advance. Uh, I don't know if it's between like the extra, like birthday week depression that I normally feel because I'm not normal. I'm sure most people are normally happy on their, <laughs> their birthdays come and, and maybe as you know, getting older, you know, mortality, the heck have I been getting done? I can't even get to these goals or benchmarks that I keep setting year after year. I this ritualistic beating myself up, which is very easy to do and, and can be very much facilitated in this space. Uh, but you guys are too kind and, and uh, are sitting there trying to be kind. I appreciate it. It's just a, yeah, it's been a crazy week. I don't want to get too much into it, but um, you know, I'll just, uh, I'll shoulder the blame as we move on as it was just, uh, those of you asking though, cause there was some like, serious stuff like my, my stepdad did actually get robbed. Um, Thankfully, they didn't, like, uh, hit him or, or mug him anything physical. Uh, two gentlemen, one grabbed his phone, the other tried to grab his wallet and didn't, which was good. And uh, my Vietnam vet <laughs> stepdad still thinks he's a young man and tried to chase after them. Um, he was in the strip where he also, you know, not victim blaming, but, you know, he, he shouldn't have been. And uh, anyways, that's a whole other story, keeping track of uh, old people. They're like toddlers when they get older. They just, you know, you got to... Keep their, your eye on them and stuff like that really sucks. Uh, I really beat myself up in all seriousness that I wasn't there. Although I probably wouldn't have made things better because of my anger issues. And, uh, you know, kind of like last podcast, I, I tend to, uh, <laughs> for as good as I am as de-escalating, I, I tend to escalate, especially because I haven't had any workouts or rolls or, or fights in a while. So, you know, um, but yeah, uh, anyways, uh, thankfully... My stepdad is hooked up to oxygen and is old and could not catch up. And those people knew he was old and just decided to outrun him. But yeah, um, between family members or people that look like family members, you know, being t- targeted, uh, just not fun. And I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I already posted about that. This isn't, you know, <sighs> going to try to keep this, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to try to get through this. How about that? Um, and not, you know, torture either of us. Uh, but yeah, so it's been a week and, and it's my fault because I made the mistake of, uh, uh, not to peel back the curtain too much, but, uh, was really just trying to get my content out earlier to you guys. Cause you know, it's been, everything's been coming out from this podcast to my betting to junkie to, er- to everything, you know, uh, at the end of the week. And, you know, a lot of you guys are like, Hey, what's going on? And, and just trying to at least get you the breakdowns, which are, you know, usually earlier. And I really worked hard to get those done earlier. Um, because I told my boss I was going to, and I, I, I made the mistake of 
you know, making that a thing and, and making, you know, giving uh, not just a, a deadline for myself, but like an earlier one. And sure enough, the universe was like, oh, really, bitch, you're going to you're going to gamble on yourself for, to your boss of all people on a deadline. Well, here's this, this, this and that to deal with. Um, so which I already talked to you guys about. So that was really fun. And uh, and yeah, so it's been a it's been a week. So let's uh, let's push through. Hopefully, we can bounce back from what was a bad week. We're gonna recap. I know <laughs> it's okay, folks. <laughs> We're gonna go from a negative to a negative. The UFC Vegas 33 recap. Hey, 33, Scotty P. Uh, <laughs> although I guess Scotty Pippen's not really doing himself favors. Uh, tell your mother I said hi. Uh, neither here nor there. Um, yeah, let's go v- UFC Vegas 33. This was awful. What, did, what was I? What did I do? Like two seven and one in picks or some shit. It was it was fucking awful. Um, yeah, I did that. I went one one and two in straight plays. Uh, oh one one in parlays, and oh one and one in props. So I guess we'll we'll, we'll go over those. Um, Sean Strickland defeated Uriah Hall. I wrote. Uh, you know, Sean Strickland, and then he had, the, he had his uh, post-fight uh, speech afterwards talking about, you know, how he could just kill a man. And uh, shots to my man, uh, Jordan Killian over there. <laughs> Back in the day, he was just like, yeah, we just interviewed Sean Strickland. This was like five or six years ago. And, like, he was pretty much, like, giving me the heads up on all this stuff that a lot of the gen pop and a lot of y'all may or may not only be realizing this now. But, uh, yeah, I wrote my notes, Sean Rittenhouse, because uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, there was uh there was there's some little parallels there. Maybe I kill some I want to kill someone, maybe I'd have to apologize, you know. <laughs> oh boy, if, if you know the, the self-admission of the two justice system right there. <laughs> like the very same day, by the way, I'm going to pre premature shouts to gorgeous George and goes. Of course dudes that you know, I fucking lie down in traffic for even more so cuz they they actually uh Amidst the craziness that just even extended back to this last week, uh, when I um, broke my finger picking up uh, picking up my car from the shop, um, and was in a pinch because uh, I almost stepped that were actually out of town this last weekend back in Chicago, and uh, so I need someone to watch Brownie, and uh, and that was great. They were great. It was awesome. Brownie loves them, but when I brought her over, she was, like, in this muzzle thing. And, you know, like I told you guys, and, like, uh, I was explaining to them, you know, it's, you know, we got a positive thing for it. But, you know, I like to put it on for the rides for the positive association and as well as, you know, God forbid I get pulled over. Um, you know, I can, you know <laughs> at least from what, you know, experiences my own people I know to what we see, uh, you know, people of color or animals, uh, not great at traffic stops as far as escalators for whatever reason. Uh, not that we're that fucking, bl- you know, I'm not victim blaming. You get what I'm saying here. Uh, I'm saying there's two strikes against me from <laughs> rolling with my dogs is what I'm saying. So I got to, uh, dumb down whatever pot and people, they think, Oh, you're fucking be left or anti cop. Like it's actually technically what I'm saying is actually technically pro cop because I'm showing more, more consideration than the average bear. Um, to the cops' point of view, because you know they have a very dangerous job and they don't know what the fuck they're walking up to, in their, you know, to to lend them some defense, right? Um, so you know, if you if you're lucky enough, if you're lucky enough to not have to grow up worrying about that, then grats to you. Don't gaslight people like me or others, folks. But uh, yeah, if you grow up uh, a certain way or in certain neighborhoods or etc., uh, you know to de-escalate as much as possible. Um, that and I've also had like you know ex cop drivers, ed teachers that gave some really useful advice on how to kind of deal on those things to kind of try to get the odds in your favor. Um, but it's funny that I you know have to think about all those things like oh god I don't want to get shot you know me me friendly me and my friendly old dog uh, you know don't want to get shot for no reason and I'm like taking precautions for things that doesn't happen. Meanwhile, Sean Strickland very same day on hair. I want to kill people. I would love to. It would be a pleasure. I would own it. <laughs> There's nothing more I would love to do. I might have to apologize. <laughs> like, uh, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm not. I just couldn't help but fucking point to that obvious thing through through the obvious lens as well as my own. But hey, uh, yeah, that was a. I, I think I picked. Yeah, I picked Hall. Um, again, wasn't confident. So you know, that, it was either going to be Strickland decision or Hall was going to pull something out. That's the way that went. Uh, Cheyenne Baez defeated uh, Gloria De Paula. Um, guess that pick was right. Fast fight. How much to say? 
Uh, Jared Gooden defeated uh, Nikolaj Stoltz. Uh, my parlay was long dead in the water. Like every leg fucking died for my. Fun. It was a fun parlay, granted, but still, I, it was a fucking devastating loss. I'll own it. Uh, and I was happy for Jared, a guy like Jared Gooden. Gambled on himself, came out on top. I mean, got a highlight. He should have got a bonus. That was kind of BS. Uh, but man, happy, happy for Gooden. Uh, Melsic Bagdazarian defeated Colin Anglin. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, oh, we'll talk about the other fighter who won in similar fashion. Everybody's just lining up to fucking jerk off right now. Poor Melsic. He's gonna, he's got to protect his uh, lower half, man. He, you know, he's gonna. The commission's not gonna let him fight if everybody's just rubbing him off so hard. <laughs> he's got the, he's got the Eastern European thing, the bad boy thing that for whatever reason the straight males seem to ogle more over the girls, which I always find hilarious. Uh, he's got the sexy striker going on, you know. Oh, dude, he is, you know. I could see why the line flipped and 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 you know the, the gambling public gassed him up. And hey, congrats to the gambling public because they cashed. Anglin, who I I actually played, I I I liked Anglin. I even did like a third round flyer. Didn't make it that far though. Uh, the defense just really was, you know, you, you know, he looked durable, but boy, with a defense like that and power like Bogdazarian does have. Um, you know, it was a bad recipe. I got to rewatch it again. All uh, I didn't watch it closely, although what little I did see, I, I felt like I saw Bagdazarian doing the same shit, like crashing into the clinch, which is annoying because he is a, a skilled, obviously, striker. And then at the same time, it looked like a lot of single shot variance stuff. And uh, I don't know how, like, crazy the setup was. And, and not taking anything away, but again, it's just like one of those things where it's like, what kick? Kick or kick. It's just like, you know, it's like, it's like I don't want to say anything because I don't, you know, I don't want to be the party pooper. Uh, I'm, I'm not a hater. I really am not. It's just what it just feels very like Godzilla, like where it's just like, you know, all right, easy, easy. I'm not saying he's not good or not a good guy. It's just like, can we just, can we just take take the mouth off his day he's good it's gonna prune up like he's in the pool too long you know if you guys fucking anyways all right back to his <laughs> jason wood defeated brian barbarina teaching uh, me and and perhaps many that sleep can perhaps do you good it's something that I, I i could certainly use another reason why my attitude's probably been in the dumpster uh i've been getting crap sleep i haven't been able to work out between <sighs> just craziness busyness uh breaking random toes and fingers that are coincidentally spread out long enough to just be annoying. Um, and, uh, oh, my finger's bending. It's still, it looks like it's just going to be add to the, add to the catalog of crooked appendages that I already carry, but it's bending. So that's good news, folks. Uh, I can make a fist and shit now. It's, you know, I mean, it still hurts, but it's whatever. Um, you know, not as much as Jason Witten, Brian Barbarina hurt. Thankfully, they got fight of the night as they deserve. Brian Barbarina, man, I was recently watching him versus Luke again. Oh my god, what a fight! Um, I feel like Brian Barbarina has been losing the fights where he drops the fighters lately. Is the ones where he loses? I know that's not statistically true, but it feels like it, right? Uh, but good on Jason Witt, man. He he fucking earned that win. You know, uh, it was kind of disturbing that Barbarina was getting dropped early. But at the same time, I don't want to say that at the detriment to take away from Wit because again, Wit completely deserves credit. Uh, Barbarina was a leg for me, and I'm sure many. But again, man, no, uh, this wasn't like the week prior where it was like I, you know, I got robbed or whatever. And I didn't even, even though I could, I wasn't even saying that in my defense. Um, this was just a bad week. I just I sucked ass, man, and uh, I, I gotta own it like I always do. Uh, not that I don't, but you know, you know what I mean. I'm just just owning it, just owning a bad week. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, shouts out to Aaron Bronstetter, man. He was uh, on an island with his grits gritsmacher, fucking Hoggle, from the labyrinth. You know, I thought you had to go to. I thought you'd have to go through a labyrinth to win, but no. Uh, it was just overinflated. Hafa Garcia. This was just a really stupid play. I. This is one of those things we were valuing someone off of a loss, and you know, I was valuing him off of who he was trading with and the upside. Heard a lot of fighters in interviews say good things about him, um, but the guy who trained at elevation and had the upside, um, just really just underwhelming. Uh, even from what I remember from uh, his, his regional fights and whatnot. But uh, again, you know, gritsmacher has been there, done that. Um, I know UFC level is not exactly the same these days, but it is. You know, this is a different stage. Obviously, so um, yeah, man, it was just stupid. Got caught speeding along with, along with many, but that doesn't matter. I'm, I'll own this one. Uh, just stupid, stupid, stupid on me. Daniel uh, Chavez uh, 
draw with majority draw with Kai Kamaka. Poor Kai Kamaka, man. You could argue that he won six rounds in a row and uh, has not won his U- uh, has not come off victorious in the UFC fight. In any of those fights, despite arguably winning all three rounds, you know, and I think it was, I think it was, I think I had a twenty nine twenty eight by the way for the um, fight before this, but you know there was an argument I believe for all three rounds, but uh, you know, um, you know the the fouls happened and it sucked too because they were they weren't he wasn't being like careless like a lot of these fouls like uh you know a lot of it was like the knee where the knee hits but then the foot hits the balls kind of a deal i think was one of them and that's always one where it's like oh you know that's definitely an inadvertent when it's those ones but uh you know fouls a foul uh you gotta take the points and uh you know no issue in that i guess but uh hopefully kakamaka gets another fair shake it's treated well from the matchmakers and uh can still hold his head up uh eric nixick of course always doing a great job uh love that guy uh, obviously biased, but yeah, um, you know, biased there, but yeah, that's, that's how I felt. Jin Frey defeated Ashley Yoder, um, uh, didn't watch it too closely, just saw that Southpaw for Southpaw defense get, you know, exemplified there when Yoder started letting go over left hands, I think, in round two. Zaruk Adeshev, I'm glad I avoided this one, because I picked Benoit, thankfully I didn't play him, because Adeshev comes up, uh, victorious. Boy, we started the night off good. It looked like it was going to go good with uh, Phil Rowe, Philly Fresh, uh, with uh, you know Neil Neil Magny defeating Chris Lytle in the opening. Ryan Koski. Uh, <laughs> it was apparently it was a good fight. Got to watch that. Um, it's funny. A lot of times I feel like m- me and Aaron just keep talking after the preview shows up, and we'll just like talk into the first fight. <laughs> I'm not going to speak for Aaron, uh, but for me, I know I just personally enjoy the interaction more than. Watching yet another fight. So, um, so yeah. Uh, shouts to Aaron Manny. I think I don't know if he how he did overall, but I know he's he's had some real uh, some real sharp uh, darts, if you will, and picks. Uh, so I want to give him a shout. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to uh, oh, Bellator two sixty three. Um, yeah, AJ McKee, AJ McKee. Uh, I'm a big fan of AJ McKee, by the way. Really nice guy in person. Uh, love his team. Um, even though I picked against him, doesn't mean I don't like the guy, obviously. Um, but I will say people need to, to, to chill. I, I feel like everybody was overcompensating from not following McKee or not following Bellator, which I get. It's my beat as well to do a lot of these fights. So, um, you know, breaking it down, and I break it down more than most, so it's like I'm not going to expect other people to have that level of knowledge or context, but... I, I, you know, especially, you know, in the media space, I think just to calm down on that, like best pound for pound. And he's going to be you know, already beat these guys and that guy's like, he still technically hasn't been in prolonged boxing exchanges, folks. Um, you know, I mean, uh, like, I mean, the, 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 you know, he, he, he blew everybody out in the first round. I'm like, that's, oh, hasn't contender series taught us to like temper that stuff obviously AJ series not AJ McKee I'm not could not trying to compare him with a contender series fighter there literally obviously but I was just like gee let's relax um that being said I don't know if I, I like Pitbull's chances any better at 155 um we'll see we'll see I, I did pick Pitbull to win I'm glad I didn't play it um, Burnell won. Uh, I didn't watch this one closely. I tried to watch this. I, I tried to watch him, but I just had to wait for the main event to come on replay because I just got burnt out trying to watch the co-main because I don't have show time and uh, I couldn't, let's just say, find other methods. And that, even that is just a pain in the ass. And I'm just sick of jumping through hoops. And I was just so burnt out at that point of the night and I, my brain is mushed by the end of the week folks so I was just like yeah, fuck it, I don't care I'll fucking read it so yeah <laughs> uh, that was that um, okay alright we're gonna go from we're gonna do some uh, shouts Amazon reads and then we'll go to the breakdown uh, shouts uh, just wanna give my man uh, Kern Batia from uh, Squares and Sharps a shout uh, he does great work uh, I try to share it when I can of course um, episode coming out 
uh, this week. That's why I felt bad for like tweeting and complaining. Uh, like just like maybe you know taking some time away from social media. I'm still gonna be doing content here for you folks in the podcasts. Hey man, you know you, you stop, you lose your spot, you don't, you lose your sanity. But uh, um, you gotta find balance somehow. And maybe I'll like be like some of y'all where like, I can have a like you know morning where I sip the coffee and read and relax, and I'm not just like waking up being hit. Hitting the hitting the ground running, being inundated with stuff, and uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm complaining about, but yeah, I just um, I'm gonna be uh, you know taking a step step back and not being as active on things. Uh, but uh, when Curran reached out, I had to do a show, man. Uh, best camp of my life with Esther Lynn was a great episode this week. And just again, love Fernanda and her podcast and her presentation and the conversations that um, happen that I wish would happen more, I wish I could have uh, more as well, and just we all should have more, you know, these is, are is good things to talk about. Um, I forgot to give Clint a shout on last week, he was on my sheet from last week, um, I think he had like a killer week the week before, I wanted to give uh, Clint Diehard MMA a shout. Um, I wrote uh, Dan L, Dan Levi, uh, my man Dan, I, you guys know Dan uh, from Half the Battle on the Coast, did the line movement, uh, MMA betting show, um, and, uh, Dan's just a dude who just, um, always, uh, always just, you know, behind the scenes, you know, uh, you know, I know, I know you know, he's, he's, he's a popular guy and, and whatnot, but just so y'all know, behind the scenes, he's, he's just a, a good dude, uh, always reaches out to me randomly, see how I'm doing, and, uh, I wanted to give him a shout, uh, Dan Levy, have the battle, Southpaw Pod, uh, their merch, I know my man, Sam has been uh, getting some shit lately, and they're just it's a fucking good community over there. So go support Southpaw Podcast. GG and Goes already gave them big shout for fucking babysitting my baby girl brownie. Big shouts to them. Uh, go support MMA Junkie uh, and the Gorgeous George and Goes uh, show uh, on Patreon, please. Amazon Reads. All right, Amazon Reads. Again, you can go mixedmarshallanalyst.com. Click through the links. To the right to support the show. If you click through on it to get like the protein, which is pretty much all I buy from them at this point, um, like it doesn't list what you buy or anything like that. So don't worry, your privacy is safe, and your privacy and security is safe with Amazon as well. But it, it will it will list what you buy. It won't list you. It won't list your car. It won't list any of that. Nothing identified. It just it only lists what's bought through the link. So I will read those off and pontificate uh, upon those as I will do now. Um, so and, and thanks for your uh, support. Um, a lot of the stuff, uh, like at least a, a good, uh, at least a good few of it, is like some almost exact stuff I bought. It was not me. Full disclosure, it doesn't. It, it wouldn't show up anyways with the way it does IP. But um, I just do want to say that to set up that Nature's Miracle Dog Stain and Odor Remover. I use that one. It's really good. Two big dogs, things happen. Um, thank you for looks looks like someone bought two of those bad boys. Um, somebody bought Honey Care All Absorb Large Twenty Two Hundred Count. Uh, what is this? Dog training pads. Oh, somebody got a somebody got a pup, huh? Somebody got a pup. I think I saw someone on my timeline had a pup recently. Using my link. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, somebody bought a Echo. Every time I hear e I see Echo, I think Echo Arena. Uh, Echo Dot 3 Gen um, smart speaker with uh, Alex A. Uh, it, it's Alexa. I just don't want to set it. I probably just set off your machine. Alexa, rub my chow. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Hey, just be glad your fucking Alexas don't have, like, robot arms. They'd be coming after you right now. <laughs> no, Alexa! Wow. It's a late night show, guys. You're getting random shit from me. <laughs> you guys' machines are probably like, sorry, did not comply. Just forget you ever heard that. It's a crazy guy on the podcast. Um, no, thank you for buying that. Uh, that, that, that wasn't cheap. Um, somebody bought uh, Scarface 4K. Uh, I was actually watching, that's funny, I was actually watching um, some uh, Cocaine Cowboys uh, last night, and then like, I watched things go to sleep, and then my brain won't shut off. And 
Yeah. <laughs> I used to beat myself up about it, but like I found out that it's actually a very common feature <laughs> with the old Tourette's. Um, so, um, but yeah, I was just watching up late, watching just uh, Cocaine Cowboys last night. Felt like I was on cocaine. I, uh, <laughs> I just couldn't go to sleep. Um, but yeah, Scarface, enjoy. Um, all right, uh, somebody bought uh, Transcend 32... GB micro memory card. All right, thank you. Appreciate that for using the link. Um, Pokemon Sword Nintendo Switch. That wasn't cheap. Thank you very much. And hopefully, uh, you or whoever you bought that for enjoys that. Um, Pokemon. Um, I used to. Oh, I used to uh, play. What was it like when the Pokemon Blue Red? That was when I was like. That was in when I was a kid, man. Um, all right. Uh, we had uh, someone bought Scott Pilgrim 4K. Spencer Kite, are you using my click through, sir? <laughs> I know Spencer's a big Scott Pilgrim fan. I haven't seen that like, since it came out. So I remember I liked it too. So perhaps I too am a Scott Pilgrim fan. Um, I, I always get that movie confused with, and it's not even anything like it, but like. I just always, for whatever reason, think of scenes from uh, Nick and Nora's infamous playlist whenever Scott Pilgrim comes up. It's one of those weird associations. Um, somebody bought CV, a little boy soccer kicks football sports team athletic knee high long tubes. Oh, yeah, I remember these bad boys. Well, Dan Tom used to play defender and striker. Sometimes uh, over in the, the little kids' soccer leagues, man. Good times. Good times. Uh, hopefully uh, hopefully your little one's enjoying it. And, and they have, uh, you know, hopefully they will still get some outdoor games. I don't know what the regulations are. But, uh, you know, um, yeah, hopefully hopefully your kid can enjoy that, man. That's who I really sympathize with at these times right now. I know. I'm fucking going on a soapbox at times, and we all can be so self-absorbed. I, I too, am guilty. Uh, it's the kids who I like to try to think about. And, uh, yeah, hopefully they're, they're enjoying that, having a good time. Uh, lastly, but not leastly, um, somebody, well, two more things, actually. Someone bought Indiana Jones 4K. Is somebody like a 4K collection? They're, like, plunging up, because, like, that's what I should be doing right now. Is why I say that. What is this Indiana Jones 4K director's? What's the director's cut? Does it like? Does it show uh, Doctor? Does it show Indiana Jones as an appropriate relationship with Short Round? Or <laughs> no time for love, Doctor Jones. <laughs> Shave some for me, Indy. <laughs> Jesus, damn, come on, he's dead. Uh, Jesus, I'm sorry, but this is a late, this is a late episode. Well, thank you for whoever bought that, and hopefully, I did not just you know sully your good memory of that fine film as uh pretty much every girl i dated i seem to have ruined uh, <laughs> seem to ruin what they watch because of these little you know i can't can't keep my mouth shut so uh yeah enjoy indiana jones and keep uh dan tom's perversions uh out of your head i audi is that what it's called uh one touch dash mail let me click on oh yeah for the phone yeah sure uh it's like, oh, uh, I gotta get one for my phone, and I was gonna say an iPad mini, but I don't own an iPad mini. <laughs> you got me a gun rack. I don't even own a gun. <laughs> uh, my head's in like off road mode because I want to get away. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. Let me know how that, uh, you know, I don't know if that's. You know, universal but yeah let me know how that works for you i gotta get one myself uh all right well that that'll uh that'll do the amazon reads thank you guys again mixedmarshallanalyst.com where you can find those all right 30 minutes let's get this breakdown out of the way let's push on through hopefully that wasn't too much of a, of a pain in the ears or at least too much more than usual um and let's try to make some money this weekend we got Derek lewis first Cyril gone. Gone where? Uh, for the interim heavyweight belt. For, you know, to for win a chance to face Francis Ngannou. Let's play Drink the Beer. You won. What did I win? Another beer. Um, that's what this is. Uh, and uh, 
gone, gone away. It's minus 355, and Derek, the oh, yeah, is a plus 270. Shout out to, again, my man Aaron Brown said he had a Derek Lewis in the TSN MMA show interview, and uh, he goes, like, having, like, Derek Lewis, like, try to name all the champions, and it was funny, like, Derek Lewis only only can name the black champions. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where when we got the flyaway, I already knew him, like he's not gonna say Brandon Moreno. He's gonna bring up DJ, even though he's not even with the company. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, DJ. Uh, but for lightweight, uh, he he didn't know um, Charles Oliveira, and uh, Aaron got him to say Charles, which you know for me, somebody who always uh, the voice that I do, I always compare uh, Derek Lewis to that viral one of those original YouTube uh, old school people. Know what I'm talking about. The original viral video with, I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Oh, yeah. I'm ready to look at my suit. It's so tight. Uh, like, <laughs> that, 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 like, I feel like that's like Derek Lewis embodied, you know, because essentially his post for interview the same thing. He's just like talking about unconsensual sex and then everything and all the, all the like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so um, to hear him say, oh, Charles, no, Charles, <laughs> it was just great. Uh, that was a great interview. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, D. Lewis, man. Um, uh, I really wanted to pick him here. I picked him at Blades. I was on an island there and came through and, you know, um, shout out to, uh, Connor Rebush fighting safe into your not, or I don't know how he puts it, but this could certainly be a case, um, of that with Cyril gone, but I still actually went with gone here. Um, just because of not so much as more proven, because uh, you know it's weird. Blades had more experience, but was arguably less proven despite going 25 minutes because he barely made it through the 25 minutes, and his such style is just asks a lot. Whereas Gon can stay within himself uh, much more in a 25 minute fight and stay within himself much safer, uh, and he and has shown that twice, twice over recently, relevantly. So. Uh, and added in the fact that he actually works the body, which is really good against Gar Derek Lewis, and it's in the bigger cage. Um, I went gone with this by decision with a caveat of getting an earlier finish because of the body work. Um, and, uh, you know, also if he's striking from Southpaw, Derek Lewis, you know, his first two knockout losses, I believe, to Sean Jordan and Matt Mitrion were, you know, from Southpaws. Um, the only uh, southpaw he's beaten was Lagoya, like boy, even off, and you know, Lagoya had a, you know, he, he did better than people give him credit for in that fight. A lot of it didn't hit, and what hit didn't hurt. Yes, yes, Lagoya, you've been, you've been stabbed. It is still healing. It looks like it, Lagoya. Go get that treated. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, it, I, I like gone here. Uh, but at the same time, if you're betting Lewis, I don't blame you because that's really the only way to bet. Like, you're paying chalk if you want gone inside the distance. Whether he gets to fight at his own pace or he's encouraged by the crowd who's probably going to be booing him, um, he has a potential to get a finish as well, perhaps late. Lewis can finish at any time of the fight to really fuck, fuck up your total play, right? It, which the totals aren't great numbers. Like I said, inside the distance props ain't great numbers either. So this is a real classic dogger pass spot. So I'm picking gone, but you know my heart's with Lewis and you Lewis better. So don't get it twisted. It's just the official pick. Next fight, uh, Jose Aldo, uh, minus 112. Pedro Munoz, or as Michael Bisping says, Pedro Munoz, oh, minus 108. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh I went with Aldo here. It's not super confident. This fight basically is going to come down to can Aldo not get 10 aided in round three and hold on. Both guys are, are durable, deceptively durable. I know Aldo's you know older, has miles, been hurt, been finished, whereas Pedro Munoz has not. Um, but, you know, Jose Aldo, he, he he does hit hard and is and is fairly precise with his counters. That maybe he could open something up. I'm still going to count on him winning two rounds because I feel like his late career cardio has been better at bantamweight. You look at the Yawn fight, um, and <clears throat> I know he was able to exercise routes that he wasn't going to be able. That he may not be able to do on paper to offlet pressure. 
which was, you know, take down Marlon Vera and take his back, which is going to be much more difficult to do. Either of those two things against Pedro Munoz. Pedro Munoz. Um, <clears throat> but I still think Aldo can win. I still think that, you know, Pedro Munoz is for his improvements. They're mainly mainly offensive. Um, and I feel like the defensive things that he does do will open up uh, the classic Aldo, you know, uppercuts and body shots for the high guard. Um, and counter hooks and counter crosses otherwise and a jab otherwise to sting throughout. Um, plus, you know, the better leg kicker and, uh, you know, he can avoid and especially avoid and counter, uh, pair those together much better now that he's back to kicking Aldo is. Um, so yeah, I mean, w would Pedro Munoz stopping Jose Aldo surprise me? Like, heck, even if he becomes like, you know, if he submits Jose Aldo with a guillotine, that wouldn't even surprise me. So, you know, anybody betting Munoz... When you set the distance, maybe a small sprinkle on sub. You know, I, I'd be going wild if I was on the Munoz. and not going wild, but I would be taking at least some shots, I, I would say, if I was on the Munoz side. So I don't blame you if you are. But since my analysis ended me up on the Aldo side, and since my analysis is going to be a close and muddy fight, uh, and I like both guys, I'm just going to stay away and try and enjoy the show and what I think should be um, a striking match. I'll see. If, we'll see if Pedro Munoz goes balls out, as we like to stereotype him. But a lot of his improvements, especially as of late, have made him more measured in the way that he comes forward. Albeit he still has that aggression, and that aggression should still pay off. Excuse me. On paper, don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is, it's not as like breakneck sellout as at least that I initially thought. So we'll see how it plays out. But I got Aldo to squeeze out the first two rounds. Uh, next fight, Michael Chiesa, minus 110, who opened as a dog, but, you know, public money has his dead even now, one, minus 110 a piece. The Vicente Luque, um, really wanted to pick Luque here, ended up submitting my pick for Chiesa, and, um, yeah, and, uh, stuck to it, because even though they're not in the small cage, which would help Chiesa here, uh, and I don't want to say striker for scrappler because Luke can grapple and he has specific anti grappling techniques from uh, front chokes to flying knees, which I think is going to be live if he wins, folks. Knockout's going to be. I know he hits a lot of cross counters, but I'm calling a left hook or a flying knee if Luke wins. But if he doesn't hit the left hook or flying knee, I think he has to get his fight. He hits the reactionary takedowns, he can work against the fence, both of which worked against Luke, uh, although Luke has gotten better takedown defense. Um, he still can be taken down, and he still doesn't f face any committed grapplers. Tyron Woodley was in the tail end of his career. Tyron Woodley also hasn't been an effective offensive wrestler since fucking Strike Force, pretty much. So, um, albeit that he tried, and bless his heart that he did, um, that still wasn't a great measure for what Kies is going to bring to the table. And uh, yeah, Kies did his full camp uh, away from Rick Little. He said so. Uh, yeah, I like that. Uh, he got because you know Rick Little's got all his focus on uh, Pena, who was supposed to be on this card, so that would have been divided focus. Instead, Kiesa gets focus to himself. Um, he's you know so uh, we'll, we'll see how that uh, goes for him. Um, you know, uh, Luke gets more attention um, in his Brasilia camp than he does with Henry Hoof. So in a similar sense, you know, not shitting obviously on his head coach who's going to be in his corner as well, kind of a thing, right? But it's just one of those things that. Sometimes the attention is better. However, in Luke's case, I don't know because he says he was working with certain bodies, but like I didn't see any tall guys. I'm, I'm sure some of them are probably southpaws, but you know I didn't see any, like super tall guys in any of his pictures, and he's one too notable. Uh, and again, if you're gonna stereotype for wrestlers, you you were gonna want him to hope to be at Sanford up in the states in a wrestler heavy camp like that, and he wasn't. So take that for what you will. Um, I'll take that, and I'm gonna play Kiesa here. By decision at plus 220, just a very small uh, sprinkle, folks. Very small. It sucks because a lot of the fights, analysis, again, my analysis tends to go are more accurate on decisions because decisions insinuate that um, you've got a lot of, you, you really want to pick the better fighter slash know who the more skilled fighter is. If you're going to count on all the, the safeguards that will be tested uh, for a decision win to come to fruition. But 
The wild card variable always being the judges to steal it out from you. It could be very dangerous. So now we're in Texas, a place notorious for that. Very dangerous for you know for 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 my reads and my decision reads, right? So I'm I'm going to state that up front. I am very aware of that, but with no longer missing the boat, which would have been worth it as far as a sprinkle on either side. It's only plus money or pass, in my opinion, because it's a fight you should just sit back and enjoy. Um, and I feel like it's it, it, it served right as a pick'em. I think that's actually fair. Um, I do feel like that Luke is good enough to not get subbed. And Kiesa has shown that he'll take control over anything, especially in a fight with a dangerous guy like this. He's going to be playing his positions really smart. And Sarah Chubot Texas, I believe they go get they go with that older version of the criteria, um, which means that this overcorrection away from takedowns uh, may not happen. It may go the, back to the other way, a la remember uh, John Jones and Reyes. <laughs> takedowns in the fourth and fifth won me the fight, even though that's not how scoring works. Sadly, with fucking Texas MMA judging logic, somehow there was actually some truth to that because they over-rewarded the takedowns. So um, that's one way to look at things here. Uh, at least it coincides with my pick along with the other analysis. So yeah, I'll take Kiesa. Small sprinkle by decision, but not going crazy, not telling you to go crazy or lay money on this fight. Um, Angela Hill plus 116, Tisha Torres minus 142. Ugh, I hate myself. I... You guys know me, I hate doing the pick changes, but uh, I spent a pick change on this one. Um, I went back with Torres, which uh, oof, pissed uh, Uncle Matt over off and my junkie off because he already got it done. And it's just, it sucks. Cause I, I feel bad for him, but I don't know how many people think or feel for me because I pretty much do all nighters on Tuesday because all these staff picks are due early in the week. And pretty much every week I fucking kill myself because I don't want to do that or inconvenience and make someone go but that was the thing you know uh, when your schedule is so tight that you do one thing you fuck up one or two other things leaving you in a no one week and it's just bad for your mental health no matter who you are and that is my situation because like i said off the top i tried very hard to get the breakdowns out for you early which meant my other pick stuff suffered um Choose Osborne, not not yet. Willem Dafoe, we got Osborne coming up, but yeah, that's what I feel like. Uh, but yeah, uh, so uh, I felt I also feel awful when I do pick changes, which as you guys know on here. So uh, it sucks. Uh, I, I Uncle Matty does not listen to this. <laughs> so he follow me on social, so he doesn't care. But like, it just it just sucks that when people don't realize that actually how much you actually do consider them in their process and how much you work toward it. But hey, whatever. Ah, uh, fuck it. Um, yeah, I, 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 but, you know, it's my fucking job to uh, explain these picks. I don't just put them up on picks. I actually have to make picks, uh, bet money picks, or, you know, people that follow me that bet big fucking money. And uh, when my analysis does not match what's on MMA Junkie, the main platform, it could be big problems. Um, so, yeah, I want to make sure I'm accurate with that. And the reason why I switched to Torres is basically because... You know, like I've been saying with uh, a lot of cases, as most fighters from, I think, the Derek Minner one and all these other, these other ones was like, I think certain style dynamics are still certain dy style dynamics. That, you know, fighters can improve, but they could, uh, ultimately most of them are, are a lot of the time still the fighters they are at heart. And I feel like Tisha Torres is firing on all cylinders. We forget that she was like a standard minus 300 favorite, a standard parlay piece. Um, say what you will about not getting finishes. She's consistent. Her output's crazy. Uh, she gets opportunistic takedowns. She does everything that older criteria judging is going to be geared toward. Uh, I guess initially I thought maybe Angela Hill could do the more damaging stuff. And I know she has improved. But she still is getting takedowns by girls that, I'm not trying to do the MMA math thing, Tisha Torres out-wrestled in Watterson and who I picked to out-wrestle. Um, and out-point, right? So, uh... It would be kind of blasphemous to go against Angela or to go against Tisha Torres here. Um, and I also think that because Angela Hill, and I like Angela Hill, but she's also very much a media darling. And I think that plays too. Like a lot of times for junkie staff picks, you're going to see the majority of us picking Angela Hill um, because she is that media darling. And like a lot of the times, which maybe played in the why I ended up submitting the pick, is that when you see a lot of people pick a fight, it's easier to just kind of conform especially if you're not like me and like 
you're like a journalist or a video guy or one of the many other beats that really don't live or die or really care about your picks, then it really doesn't matter, right? You can you can, you can do that. Um, but yeah, like I um I I that's probably another reason why I you know I'm I'm not a fan of this uh as I I'm not trying to pick your fucking vent and it's point shit where it don't belong or whatever but uh you know super grateful for where i am obviously um but like you know um but like i just hate the whole process you know uh, squares and sharps they ask me what's the best advice i'm like clear your biases don't look at other people's thing like whether you see other people's bets or you place a bet early without doing your research it's like there's all this bias out there and we don't realize how much subconsciously fucks up your own reads at least for me especially and uh, a lot of times, and I know, and shout out to my man John Morgan, he'll say the same thing, is when you see everybody on Junkie picking a certain way, it doesn't mean we're disrespecting a lot of the fight, the, the other fighter. A lot of times, it's a close fight, like all these main card fights are, um, but it's just coincidentally all the staff ends up picking a lot of the times the same fighters. And my theory to that, kind of uh, coattailing and, 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 and hopping on uh, to John there, is that, Again, that that natural conformity, right? Uh, is that when you see all this, and you know, especially you know, the copy paste era, it's sometimes easier just to kind of just just conform with the things, right? And if it's a media darling, so I, I'm always do my best to try to call myself out and check myself on those things, and make sure I'm looking at the analysis. And the analysis says Torres should be the slight favorite, so I have no issue. I'm not playing this fight because. It's probably going to still end up being a split decision by the nature of how these two both fight. And again, we're going to decision in MMA, MMA in Texas. But if judges are going to be dumb, they're usually going to go for the more output or the fighter they see go to the takedown. If it's a close round and they're confused, they're probably going to go with the fighter who punched more and got the takedown. And if they are, in fact, leaning toward an older version of the criteria... And we're gonna have to go off of what traditionally we've seen judging from that criteria, that from that said region usually do. Well, then I'm gonna go with a fighter that puts out more output and probably gets the takedowns, and that's Torres. All right, next fight: Casey Kenny minus 122, uh, Song Yadong plus 100. Man, getting getting plus money on Yadong. I mean, talk about value burning a hole in your pocket, right? I mean. Your dong betters, you know, if you're hard up for a spot, here, 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 here it is. This is where you, you you should let go. I mean, don't unleash everything, you know. Um, don't 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 empty out your whole bankroll, you know. Let's uh, you know. All right, Dan, stop searching for <laughs> dong references here. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Dan. Wow. <laughs> fucking stop Asian hate. Meanwhile, you're just like making fucking you know sexual. Uh, Eighth grade level Yadong jokes. Congratulations, you fucking hypocrite, Dan. Uh, even more so, I'm gonna go with Casey Kenny here. <laughs> I'm gonna go against my own uh, countrymen there. Uh, I'm gonna go with my countrymen, I should say, against my own. Uh... All right. God damn it! Can't call him what Cheeto Vera called him. God damn, I'm. It's late, folks. I'm unfiltered, and I'm I'm splitting all my words up here. Uh, uh... Um, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going against my Chinese brother and, 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 and siding with my American brother. That's what I meant to say. Was that so hard to say? Jeez, uh, Jesus, man. Um, yeah, I'm going Casey Kenny. You guys know I'm a big Casey Kenny fan. Was looking at a play here, possibly Casey Kenny by decision, but, um, even though I went back to watch Dominic Cruz fight and I still disagree, I still think that, uh, again, not super hard because I was biased and I played it, but even like looking back after all that passed over and i know there's still remnant bias granted but again it was like one of those classic things like similar to miranda maverick another southpaw where every time casey kenny would get attacked uh, he would counter with leg kicks or body kicks and we know how judges love rewarding counters and leg and body work um that being said even though he did better than a lot of people gave him credit for uh he still fought, fought very close um his aggressiveness still shows that it can, you know, not affect his pace as much as Yudong, but it can affect his pace a bit to enough for where you start worrying, whether it's from body language or his technique, Kenny. So, again, even though he's still, I feel better than Yudong in that department, 
It's not someone that's going to blow him out in the third round, which is what you're going to want for, um, you know, uh, Yadong. Although Yadong actually had a good third round in a losing effort against Phillips, granted, because Phillips maybe guests even harder uh, than Yadong does in that third round, right? Who knows? So, um, so yeah. Um, but I, and Yadong said he's going to wrestle more, which can he can get taken down despite his judo and wrestling and jujitsu uh, base. Um, but I would like to think he is the better scrambler and that Yadong will tire if he does that game plan. It'll, it'll really bring about his uh, gas tank. It'll really ring it out. So, um, I'm going to go with Casey Kenny and his Southpaw stylings and his scrambling and, um, just very offensive, heavy style, but with, both of them, for different reasons, historically putting themselves in close fights. Um, I stayed away from the decision prop, much less playing it in general, or playing it much less than a decision prop of any sort. So, pick is Kenny. Uh, next fight, Rafael Fazeev versus Bobby Green. Fazeev minus 300, Green plus 235. You guys know I'm a big Green fan, and I'm a big defender of his style. But even though I defend his style, I still took Fazeev here. But I stayed away. I know the line is wide, but um, it's a. Uh, I forget. I try not to listen to this to this one. It just came on while I was doing something. I couldn't turn it off. But I do want to give credit where credit's due. It's, and, and the reason why I hate listening to anything is because it's stuck in my filter. But uh, uh, real smart guy. I uh, once again agree with him. Uh, Stops to uh, Sri Ram from the fight site and shouts to the fight site. Um, I forget, I think he said something along the lines of Bobby Green is like, uh, you know, he's a something-something dog, but he'll, he'll, you know, he's a plus-something dog, but he'll look like, but he'll look like a, a plus-100 to plus-125 dog. And, he, you know, you'll feel good about it and be like, see, it, the line shouldn't have been that wide, but it still won't be a winning bet. <laughs> and uh, I forget how he put it. I just brutalized it. Apologies, but I essentially felt the same way. And again, I'm a big Bobby Green fan, but against a guy who can kick, and much does not just kick, but really kicks to the body and legs, um, and has decent wrestling ability himself. Uh, at least you know for to not get like you know lose a round off an opportunistic Bobby Green takedown. Um, I gotta go for Zeev here. I know he looks sketchy at the end of some third rounds. It looks like that's been improving. You have to hope that is. And again, Bobby Green's not gonna be the guy. Again, I love his style and I defend his style, but I can't defend his fight IQ so much, right? And he's not going to be the guy to turn on the pace even when he needs to. So I'm going to go for Zeev here for a decision. That's more competitive than we think, but yeah. Um, no stoppage, although that wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world, I guess, if if uh, Fazeev could stop him, I suppose, but I don't think he will. Um Draco Rodriguez, minus 114. Vince Morales, uh, minus 106. Uh, Morales is, along with uh, uh, three more fighters that we'll get into, are coming off of our on the layoff list this week. Last week, uh, it was NA, no show on two. And then 0-1 was Stolza, by the way. So, probably back in the 58 or at least high 57% for win rates off fighters coming off year plus layoffs for those following along at home. Not much to say here. With that being said, Morales should win this fight slightly more, but the odds say different. I'll go Rodriguez, even though he looked very disappointing in getting iced by, hey, man, it was a hobby last time out. So we'll see. I'll take Draco here. Not confident. Stay the fuck away, motherfucker. It's just one of those days. Um, it's all about the Alonzo Meadowfield field minus 250. But Ed, short fuse Herman, plus 198 is the comeback. Um, what the fuck is, you know, wrong with me? And what the fuck is wrong with MMA, wrong with this card, when Ed Herman in 2021 is my most confident play of the card? <laughs> He's definitely the most valuable play. You can't argue me. Well, not you can, of course, but you'll see when uh, my playlist is is complete when Vulshan has formed um definitely the value spot here and i just took a 0.75 unit shot 
on Edner Herman Moneyline. Basically, Menafield, kind of like what I was saying with uh, Bagdasarian, Menafield also has that habit where he looks the part, but he keeps freaking crashing into the clinch, right? And, you know, he can actually get takedowns and submit a guy in like a Bagdasarian. And that's impressive, actually, a light heavyweight, right? To have that dual threat. So I hope Menafield uh, improves upon that. Again, I wish him well, but between him not showing a reliability to fight past six or seven minutes and crashing into his work, um, I don't like that. That's why I picked him and cashed with the OSP. Tennessee, Tennessee. And that was like shot OSP. So like that loss ages even worse, in my opinion. You look at like what OSP's been doing. He's always been inconsistent, but like now you look back at it and this was what is clear shot uh, a stretch of OSP. Oof. Uh, that loss ages terrible. But you know, he fights the guy on short notice and gets the OSP the 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 Von Pru himself and you know he's coming in with all the heat as the hometown guy but Ed Herman also has a decent left hook OSP knocked him out with and more impor importantly as a uh, if y'all remember me calling this live tweet like right before it happened uh, when he fought Tim Bosch um, I called Ed Herman the knockout live before it happened I picked him and played him but uh, I actually called the exchange uh, because of a uh, Bosch, Bosch's stature, which, by the way, he's a, a shorter light heavyweight, um, like Menafield, who uh, also could fight at, what did he fight like Menafield? Um, kept dipping and changing level into that space, and uh, sure enough, Ed's uh, good in the clinch, man. Team Quest dude, alum, of course he knows what the fuck to do in the clinch. Grapple. So he's not going to get caught in a Von Pru. Um... If Menafield grapples with him, he's just going to tire himself out and then give Ed opportunities to sub him and come on strong later. So I may actually even, like, take some round two and round uh, three flyers. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, that's actually good. We'll see. Uh, what is Ed Herman round two? Oh, my God. My vision is so blurry with my glasses. Like, that's how tired I am, folks. And have not been sleeping. Um, Herman wins round two plus 1,600. Wow. Herman wins round three plus 24. Yeah, I'm going to be sprinkling it on those two um, as well. Uh, late ads there. Small flyers, though. Like, super small. Um, yeah, yeah. Small flyers there. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Um... Next fight, Catalina Kovalkiewicz, minus 130, and Jessica Penny, plus 106. Carolina, uh, open minus 180. So you're getting a discount on her. I thought about playing her straight, but I, if you play her straight, you'll be kicking yourself in the morning. You'll have no respect. Um, so uh, I went with... Uh, a plus money option, a plus uh, almost the same number but reverse. Uh, decision plus 120. Just because stylistically I think she'll roll, roll past her. Um, Carolina's always been strong in the clinch. She hits deceptively hard and visually, at least more importantly, visually harder to the judges. Puts out more to the judges, more diversity. Um, just has more of the things that the judges like, especially again, these type of judges. And uh, I don't think that Penny has the physicality to get the fight to the ground or get the kind of fight she wants. And I don't think she's the physicality or force really behind her strikes, um, even to score meaningfully under the criteria or whatever the fuck criteria Texas will be using. Um, you know, and no hate on Penny. Uh, you know, I've always been a fan of her and her past accomplishments. But, um, yeah, and, you know, yeah, I don't think she won her last fight, obviously, but neither here nor there. I just think stylistically, Carolina Kovalkiewicz is going to roll. I know she's look like borderline shot and is on a big losing streak, but again, it's like the Tisha Torres thing. Look at who she's losing to, and she was also training with Yoni and Jacek. I got to imagine that shakes the cobwebs pretty loose and should at least give her some confidence now. Go represent Poland. Um, yeah, I, I took Kovalkiewicz by decision. Uh, I put, I think like four, two unit, like some some weird fraction. I, I uh Kind of have it balanced out here, and I'll explain why. Uh, uh, yeah, I put a point, uh, point 0.40 units, so uh, somewhere between a quarter and a half there, folks, um, for, for me at least. 
Okay. Um, Manal Cape, minus 215. Ode Osborne. Odor? Odor? Oday. Osborne. Um, there's, a, there's a typo. They put Odor here on Best Fight Odds. Um, yeah, I took uh, Manal Cape, the switch dance for Southpaw. Um, it's pretty much it's Osborne's first trip down to 125. And uh, Cap is... Um, you know, there's an argument, and I know he disappointed many, but I actually picked against him both those fights, so that didn't surprise me. And he fought tough competition in his defense, and even though I didn't score it that way, there's an argument, obviously, you could make for him winning his last fight. So uh, it's it's a bit deceptive there. However, he's not doesn't seem to be resting on his laurels. He's training everywhere from uh, a couple of jiu-jitsu gyms, Mayweather's, PI, Extreme Couture, uh, you know, uh, as well as, uh, his, AKA, um, this guy's been training everywhere. Obviously he's got the, uh, you know, the dominance MMA, uh, and the connections and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, he's getting afforded a lot of high level training opportunities. Uh, so I expect him to make the most of that. Um, I also expect his countering and low output style that I usually picked against. I think it'll come more to life against a guy who's aggressive like Pantoja, but not as experienced um, and not as dangerous um, as Pantoja. That is Ode Osborne. Um, so I also like that. So he's actually one leg of a parlay um, for fun. Nothing big. I actually only went half the amount I normally went on parlays because of how last week went. And this is an easy two leg for plus money. Well, not easy two leg, but, you know, easy math two leg. We'll see how... We'll see how the calculus stacks up in the cage. <laughs> Back to you, John. Uh, Anderson DeSantos, plus 180. Miles Johns, minus 225. Um, yeah. Um, shoots. We got a, I took Johns here for the second leg. That's the uh, That's the parlay. Basically, you know, it's tough. Anderson DeSantos, man, he uh, you know, is trading Macaco Gold Team. Charlie Olives. Chucky Olives, sorry. I am using Dan Hooker's version. You gotta use the MMA analysis version, Chucky Olives. Um Camp and he looks, you know, he looks super healthy despite being thirty six years old at Bantamweight. Uh does uh, Anderson Dos Santos. Looks like he's been doing a lot of wrestling. Uh which makes me, you know, makes me nervous. You know, he looking like he, he really wants, you know, another upset as as, you know, the live dog that he can be. He will fight for your money, but uh did end up going with, with Johns. Um, you know, instead of being suspect in the third round, he's out here knocking guys out in the third round. Um, his power is wrestling edge in the big cage, plus that jab that he showed. Uh, I like that a lot. I think he's going to be able to uh, win two, if not all three rounds. It's just a matter of not that he wins the rounds. It's does he get rocked and does the pressure build up and, you know... Um, does he uh, shoot and then get guillotined, you know? Like, you know, does he get kind of clubbed and subbed in that inadvertent way by shooting into the sub? I think Ricky Simon that though, uh, got uh, got duped a similar way by Dos Santos on the regionals on tight, at, at Titan. Um, does that happen? Well, good news for John is that he, one of his main training partners in camp uh, over at Fortis was uh, uh, Damon Jackson, a.k.a. Uh, Walt Goggins. Uh, you know, uh, we know how good his, uh, his guillotine is. And as far as a opportunistic scrappy guy. So I, I actually really like that as a training partner <clears throat> for, um, Johns. Cause I think the guillotine is the one way DeSantos really wins this fight. Um, so I'm going to go with Johns and I, uh, paired him with, uh, cop for plus money, uh, half a unit. Uh, Melissa Gatto versus uh, Victoria Leonardo Leonardo. Pick him. Minus 110. Took um, Gatto and stayed away uh, on my avoid list. Uh, next fight, Johnny Munoz. Minus 265. Jamie Simmons. Plus 210. Not enough. I was looking at going to Munoz and Johns, uh, which would have been close to even, but just I'd rather go with fighters that are more... I don't know if reliable, but yeah, more reliable sample size at least. Instead of like random regional fights and we don't a lot of we don't know stuff. You know, it's not it's not worth putting my money or my time into. 
that's the way I'm trying to decide these things, both for money management and for time management, to be honest, mainly, folks. Um, and in those cases, I will admit that, as I always do, as it's on the avoid list. How did we do in time? 105. Not too bad. Not like I'm trying to expedite, but still close enough, right? All right. Um, <clears throat> apologies, folks. Essentially, I was just tired this week. It's I blame nobody but myself. I'm just... Uh, I love and appreciate you guys, so don't, don't take it that way. I hope, uh, hope was able to get some laughs, even if they were random, <laughs> borderline creepy. Uh, I appreciate you guys, and uh, yeah, I'm grateful, and I'll try to be better. All right, recapping. Taking Gon over Lewis, taking Aldo over Munoz, taking Kiesa over Luque, taking Torres over Hill, taking Kenny over Yadong. Taking Fazeev over Green. Taking Rod ah, Rodriguez. <laughs> Odds change. Taking Rodriguez. <laughs> um, sorry. Over Morales. Taking Herman over Menafield. Taking Kovalkiewicz over Penny. Taking Cop over Osborne. Taking... Johns over DeSantos, taking Gato over Leonardo Leonardo, taking Munoz over Simmons, uh, Parlayed Cape and Johns plus 125 for half a unit, uh, Herman plus 205 I got him for, um, um, 0.75 units, uh, KK by decision, <laughs> I think it's now 3Ks there, Carolina Kavalkiewicz by decision plus 120, ah, I scared myself there. Uh, 0.40 unit ish neighborhood. Uh, Kiesa by decision plus 220. Um, like quarter un uh, neighborhood. I'm gonna add uh, Herman round one and uh, round two and round three. Little small little flyers there as well. Avoid for me at least Gato, Leonardo, Leonardo, Simmons, Munoz, Draco, Morales. Uh, you can support the show and uh, as I uh, help me continue to provide the same, not sane. Let's be honest. Free coverage, let's just say that. Uh, and hopefully helpful. MixedMarshallAnalyst.com. On it, click through Amazon. Click through. Don't take your privacy. Secure uh, one-time donations if you feel so inclined. PayPal link there over to the right at MixedMarshallAnalyst.com again. Thank you for the five-star ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts. YouTube, Daniel Tom, MMA. Um... Much love, y'all. I, I really appreciate y'all. Oh, yeah, it's going to be my birthday during the fights on August 7th. So uh, I probably said that at the beginning. It's probably, I'm just all fucking in, in a crap mood. So apologies. Um, good luck on your picks and plays. Cash some bets for, for your birthday boy here. And always protect your neck.